This episode of Doc Talk is brought to you by First Bank. We're not just your neighborhood bank, we're your neighbors. Our local team lives up to the name, putting our customers and community first. To experience First Bank difference, stop by any of our 13 Knoxville area locations or visit firstbankonline.com. First Bank, member FDIC. Hello, I'm Dr. Rob Page and welcome to Doc Talk. Doc Talk is a podcast that's produced by the Knoxville Academy of Medicine and features its physician members giving information to patients in terms of making their health care decisions. Um, I feel so fortunate uh, to have with me today um, Dr. Clayton Bell. Uh, Dr. Bell is, uh, is, is uh, with the University of Tennessee and he practices integrative medicine at the University of Tennessee, okay. which, which is involved in terms of not, not just doing um, usual therapies as we think of for treating diseases, but more preventing diseases by making our daily decisions. Absolutely. Um, and we're here today to talk about uh, neurologic overstimulation, mm -hmm. which uh, I, I'm certain that none of us are none of us are any sort of guilty of. You know, we, we constantly are you know constantly you know practicing our mindfulness and course, you know, taking our day. quiet time. But but talk to us about what that means and what that means for our bodies. Sure, absolutely. Okay, so I'd like to start this by actually just being silent for a moment. How rare is that? Incredibly rare. I mean, incredibly yeah. rare, mm -hmm. right? I mean, I'm, I'm a talker. Mm -hmm. um, we are constantly bombarded with information. And I want you to think about throughout your day, when was there any quiet time, literally? I mean, it's we wake up in the morning, right? If you watch the news or you listen to the radio in the car, and then how many hours a day do you spend on the computer screen, right? And then once again, you're listening to the news on the way home. Usually the news is not playing anything positive in the world. And there's a lot of great things happening out there, oh, yeah. you know, but it's not. It's really focusing on some of the negative aspects um, in, in, in life that are, that are real, but it's the focus. And the more you focus on something, the more it magnifies it, right? Mm -hmm. And so if you have a smartphone, which I'm sure you do, you know, look and see how much time you're spending on a day. Most people are spending several hours on their smartphone. They're watching TV at least two or three or four hours a day. Um, and then are constantly exposed to really negative, adverse emotions and information, whether it's social media, which has been linked now, we see to a lot of mm -hmm. psychological distress, especially absolutely. amongst vulnerable yep. um, populations. And teen girls. And teen yes, girls, especially with suicide. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's really unbelievable. So what this essentially does is this constant bombardment of our neurological system puts us in a state of fight or flight. So it really leads us over more to the sympathetic part mm -hmm. of our autonomic nervous system, which is the part of our nervous system, as you very well know, yep. we're not really constantly in control of, right? Absolutely. And so that's fine if we're, let's say, crossing the street and a car is about to come out of the corner. We need to run across the street. And that was great back in the day when we were running from a saber-toothed tiger. Mm -hmm. What happens now is we live there. And so that leads to a lot of major medical conditions. So think about chronic stress conditions, chronic fatigue syndromes, autoimmune diseases, mm -hmm. things like cancer, you know, getting colds, even getting the coronavirus, you could be susceptible to this because your immune system is dropped from constant stress. So we're not just talking about stress in terms of the way that we classically look at it as emotional stress or, right. or, or uh, you know, an or anxiety, mm -hmm. or we're talking about stress that actually um, takes a real toll on our bodies in terms of the way that we're actually able to adapt. Absolutely, because you think about that, it's okay. So let's say it's an emotional stress, right? Like let's say I'm really stressed out. Um, let's say, uh, this, okay, so let's just go back a year from now, right? Let's think about like the political scene a year ago. And I don't care, I don't yeah, care who you yeah. voted for, I'm not going into any of that. But everybody was supercharged, right? So let's say that it's nine o'clock at night or 10 o'clock at night and you watch the news, whatever your, your news of choice is, right? Um, and then you're trying to go to bed, that's not gonna happen. Okay, but what's gonna happen is you're gonna start kicking out different chemicals, right? You're gonna kick out more cortisol out of your adrenal glands because your body thinks it's in danger, mm -hmm. okay? Things like chronic cortisol are actually gonna change, just say your HPA axis, right? And that's gonna be the hypothalamus pituitary mm -hmm. adrenal axis. So over time, what happens is your amygdala grows in your brain, which is essentially your fear processing center, right? And that's there for a good reason too, but it becomes magnified. It's gonna shut down some of the prefrontal cortex and some of the neurological synapses there. And then you're gonna have like this overproduction of cortisol. Well, if you do that over time, what happens eventually the adrenal glands will get a bit worn out. Mm -hmm. So you'll be stressed, 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 and a sudden, People go into these chronic fatigue syndromes, these weird like autoimmune diseases, and like their body's just 
quit functioning essentially. Because essentially what we're doing now is that we're putting ourselves into a into a chronic sense of just survival mode. Exactly. Uh, you, exactly. So I mean so we're survival mode all the mm -hmm. time, which all puts time. incredible amounts of stress, which Absolutely. which as you say, you know, classically, you know, historic or you know, not necessarily historically, but more evolutionarily mm -hmm. is is designed to preserve us. Yeah, it's, it's a good but thing. we're not supposed to be there all the time. No, and we tend to live there. And like you said, most of us don't have a daily mindfulness practice. You know, things like physical activity are can definitely offset this. Good sleep at night can definitely offset this. But in our culture, you know, there's this mentality, and especially amongst doctors, right? Like, I know it's better now, but even going through my medical training, people that didn't need to sleep much, and if you could get by for four or five hours a night, that was mm -hmm. fine. And what we found is that's not the case at all. But, you know, having a good night's sleep will offset that big cortisol rush. Physical activity will do it, but even in our culture too, we're such extremists, and the extremes are so celebrated that we can actually run ourselves into a digger uh -huh. hole by over exercising, which uh -huh. I am very guilty of. Yep. You know, so it's really fascinating. So we go from surviving one way to surviving the other yeah, way. Yeah, exactly. And what the thing we really need to do is essentially shut it down and relax. But that's the thing that we don't do. Absolutely. So, so, and and, and the other thing that I that we touched on before we started talking was about how children are exposed to this. Yeah. And, and, and children, and not necessarily so much about political issues, but how they are constantly exposed to, uh, even at a young age, mm -hmm. about being in front of screens and yeah. being in front of televisions. And it, it, sorry, sorry, I didn't run through it. No, no, go ahead. So it's something we talk about a lot. So my wife's actually a neurodevelopmental occupational therapist, and we have a two-year-old right now. So this is huge for us, mm -hmm. right? So she actually, the only screen time she's ever gotten in her whole life is FaceTime with the grandparents. Oh, wow. So we don't we don't want to watch TV and that kind of stuff. Cause I just know. I wish I could have said that, but any. <laughs> well, I mean, it's just it, it's because I think some of the things that we've seen and we've experienced and like you know some of us have addictive personalities. And it was very you know. novel when when my kids were very young oh, as well. Yeah. So and, yeah. and it's helpful, right? Like I grew yeah. up on computer, learning different you know how to type and right. math skills on the computer and all that. Like I remember this math blaster game I played when I was a kid. Oh yeah. But anyway, but now it's just this constant bombardment, and you look at social media, and the thing is, we know that it changes the neurological archetype or, ar or architecture of the brain. We don't know what the long-term side effects of that are going to no, be, no. but you already see it, right? You're looking, you know, you mentioned young women, adolescent women, and you look at the suicide rates, and I heard a study published not long ago, but it said, I think it was 6% of the adolescent female suicides were directly contributed to Instagram in America, and 12% of those suicides mm -hmm. were contributed to Instagram in the UK. You know, and Facebook, Instagram did research on that themselves, and it basically kind of covered it up. Mm -hmm. You know, which is really fascinating. So I'm not villainizing anything, but I'm saying it makes a lot of sense. If you're constantly looking at everybody else's perfect life, right. and then you examine your real right. life, well, that's a very distorted view of reality. And it's a, it's a constant sense of judgment all the time. Always. Like constantly, constantly. So so we know about the things that exist. Um, now, and now, if I were to come in and see you as a patient, um, now, generally, you would not necessarily see me as a patient, or one of your one of your partners would not come in and see me as a patient, uh, just to recommend to me about what I should be doing in terms of stress. But you would have general recommendations for any patient who mm -hmm. comes in to sure. see you about what sorts of things they should do. Sure, and I see a lot of patients that come in literally for chronic stress, and most of these people that I'm seeing uh, for chronic stress are essentially um, like in the medical field. A lot of nurses, nurses, I think, are more open to to care than, than doctors. Mm -hmm. Doctors tend to be a little more like, <laughs> you know, they really like to pretend we have it together, yep. right? But it's doctors, nurses, pharmacists, veterinarians, um, people that own businesses. So essentially, it's it's these very high functioning, you know, executives or people that are that are making things happen. The problem is, they don't have none of us do. None of us have the bandwidth to excel in all the areas that we want to. And so instead of picking and choosing things that are really, really important to us, we essentially overload and bombard ourselves with everything and we essentially run the car to juice. Right. So, but, you know, chronic stress is a part of ever, well, not, not everybody's life, but it's a, it's a part of most of our lives. And for instance, uh, I see about half the patients I see have cancer, right? And most of those patients I see have a subpopulation of very, very high of breast cancer patients. And what I found, shockingly, I used to think that cancer was mainly related to diet, which it is, you know, and depending on the cancer you look at. But what I found with breast cancer is I think it's even more related to stress. If I see 100 women with breast cancer, 99 of them have either had some acute stressor in the six months previous to diagnosis, or they're under some chronic stress load, like they're a caregiver for a parent, or they are in a bad relationship with a partner, or what have you. And so it's really incredible how this touches every set of illnesses, not just the and obvious so, ones. Like and so it's not person. necessarily anecdotal that when, when things in our lives, that, that when things happen in our lives that are bad, that, you know, necessarily that we end up with another, you know, possibly a cancer diagnosis, yeah, yeah. that there actually may be a causal relationship oh, there. there definitely is. Yeah, yeah, so when you have like bad things that happen in your life, right, let's say you're chronically stressed out, well, that's going to literally decrease your white blood cell count, which right. are going to have things like natural killer cells that are going to fight out cancer. I mean, the truth is, 
we both have cancer right now. And hopefully we never know about it because our immune system picks it up. Right. It takes care of it. It's right. just like during cold season. You know, we get exposed to cold viruses and flu viruses and probably coronaviruses on the daily. You know, hopefully, though, you know, we do mitigation, you know, uh, strategies that are going to decrease that, like washing our hands, not touching our face, you know, wearing masks, we're out in public, you know, this is the exception because we're having a little interview right now. But in general, you know, when things are really high, I encourage you to, to do those practices for sure. Yeah. So, uh, so we're kind of running out of time. Any sort of general recommendations you give to yeah, patients about, about ways that they could try to avoid this or maybe to sure, at least ameliorate sure, it to sure. some degree? Yeah. So if you have an obvious stress in your life, try to eliminate it, right? Like throw, or I think it was uh, Walt Whitman said, dismiss that, which insults your soul. Mm -hmm. So pick those out, get rid of them. Um, I would take all the buzzers, alerts, alarms off your phone. You know, I would not have your email directly to your phone and definitely no like Facebook update post to your phone or anything like that. You need to work for it. Uh, turn it off. So when you go home, have a cutoff time where you don't check your work emails after say 6 p.m. And you know, just make it very known to your partner. Say, I don't, I, you know, if you don't work on the weekends, you don't work on the weekends. You're unavailable, right? right. right? So it really have some. And I think it's something people are very hesitant to do because yeah. you know the, the FOMO, the fear of missing out, and yeah. the fear of missing phone calls, and the fear of not yeah. being able to be available instantly. Really, sure. just really concerns people now. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, go camping. Yeah. Go camping in a place that doesn't have cell phone service. I mean, that's an incredibly liberating experience. And then the other thing is how to build up your resiliency. So like a daily meditation practice is huge. You know, you'll be amazed, even if it takes 10 minutes a day, how much you feel like you have extra time throughout the day and how much mm -hmm. more present you are. You know, physical activity, exercise, make time for sleep. You know, all those kind of things. And just do whatever relaxes you, whether it's journaling, drawing, praying, laughing, spending time with friends, watch a funny movie, go for a walk with the dog. Just It's the simple things in life that essentially yeah. have no production value. Yeah, absolutely. Well, well, thank you so much for giving sort of us an in introduction into, into the things that you do in terms of integrative sure, medicine. Sure. Um, you mentioned earlier that unfortunately you're not going to be here as a physician, but you work with two other uh, physicians who Fantastic are all, also very involved in this. And if you very give much. us their, their names, sure. they are... Dr. Rocio Hewitt and Dr. Chris Harris. You can find them at the Integrative Health Clinic at UT Medical Center at 865-971-3539. They are incredible physicians. I highly, highly, highly recommend them. And yeah, they're great. And I love, the, I just got to put a plug in there for UT Medical Center. I love UT Medical Center. Yeah. They are the best people that you could ever even dream of working with. So it's just a fantastic facility. I was going to say, and it's a real blessing to have them here in the Absolutely. area. Absolutely. It certainly them. is. Love so, so and, and any other information that we have that, we, that you'd like for patients? You know, you, you mentioned some websites, maybe some other additional yeah, think, uh, ideas about where patients could get more sure. ideas about maybe mindfulness sure, sure, sure. or maybe yeah, check meditation. Out, check out or, a meditation app. I mean, there's yeah. some that are free, but I mean, even like Headspace is a great one, especially for production-oriented people because you can click it off and do 10 minutes a day. <laughs> a Calm's a good one. Um, Insight Timer is a freebie. Uh, they're 10% happier is one. There's a lot of good ones out there. And then, you know, if, if you want to get trained in a more traditional model, like mindfulness-based stress reduction is typically like an eight-week class. Transcendental meditation is something that was huge back in the, you know, oh, 80s, yeah. 90s. Uh -huh. I got trained in that. It's actually, I really like it. It's a great modality. It's kind of a mantra-based. But really, it, meditation is like vegetables, right? There's not a best vegetable. It's the one that you'll do every day. Right, right. And, every day. and notwithstanding, we're not, we, we can still stay on our smartphones and we can actually yeah, disconnect while we're still time. connected Absolutely. at the same time. Absolutely. So. Absolutely. Well, uh, Dr. Bill, thank you so much for joining me here today and give us, giving us some information about things that we can do to basically help ourselves as, uh, as patients and to basically make ourselves, uh, you know, basically to improve our health without, sure. you know, without making, you know, dramatic changes in our lifestyle. Yeah, simple things, so. just like a one degree change. And before you know it, you'll be where you want to be. Absolutely. Thanks so much. Absolutely. Thank you. And with that, that brings this episode of Doc Talk to a close. Uh, Doc Talk is a podcast that's produced by the Knoxville Academy of Medicine and features its physician members giving information to patients and, uh, that are helpful in terms of making their healthcare decisions. I'm Dr. Rob Page, and thank you so much for joining us. This episode of Doc Talk is brought to you by First Bank. We're not just your neighborhood bank, we're your neighbors. Our local team lives up to the name, putting our customers and community first. To experience First Bank difference, stop by any of our 13 Knoxville area locations or visit firstbankonline.com. First Bank. Member FDIC.